router 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 let's call the whole thing off Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to return to the subject of SIM routers or LTE routers or mobile routers. Ultimately I am talking about routers that do not require you to have the internet running via a wire into your home or office and I would say in 2023 and going into 2024 these have never been more desirable whether it is the rising costs of wired broadband internet globally or the sheer convenience of having a wireless router that you can take with you on the go, a wireless router that you can set up in an office space or a home space and ultimately remove and untether yourself from being tied down to either a long running contract with most broadband providers kind of locking you in a 12 to 18 to 24 months, more on that later on. But on top of that, just the sheer convenience of having the ability to create a separate internet connection going into your home or office that is as good as and in some cases, in some locations, better than wired broadband connections while you're waiting for your local council to go ahead and add some decent speed internet to your area. Now, before we go into the nuts and bolts of this video, and again, you can fast forward to so there should be some timelines at the bottom if you just want to skip ahead to my five big recommendations. I will say we have to set some rules and indeed some guidance here moving forward. So, in order for a router to be considered one of the best out there, because I really have funneled it down to the five based on my own personal experience, experience of my colleagues and value of individual devices there, there are certain rules we have to go along. And when it comes to getting a router these days for a SIM-based internet connection, we've got to have those guidelines. Those of you that have come to this video because maybe you watched my um, SIM routers, 10 things you need to know video, perhaps, and again, a lot of self-plugging here. Maybe it was the mobile routers versus uh, hotspots and tethering video. There's going to be one big one for a lot of you, and that is 5G coverage if a router of the thousands literally tens if not hundreds of thousands of sim routers on the internet right now that you can buy if it doesn't have support of 5g mobile carrier coverage i will not count it now you might be living in one of the many areas of the uk that doesn't have 5g coverage but 5g coverage is growing exponentially there it is in the green if you're based in the us us coverage depending on the carry that you want to choose is getting bigger in some cases bigger than others but in others you know surprisingly small or surprisingly large and just generally accessibility towards 5g is of course still regionally dependent but 5g mobile carrier coverage is backwards compatible and as 5g grows out becomes more affordable even if you're in a 4G or even a 3G area, as they become available, you want a SIM route that can scale up. So if there's no 5G SIM coverage, I'm not including it. Next up, it's worth highlighting, I'm not gonna include any SIM or LTE router that is locked to any or even a small number of mobile carriers there. If it's not unlocked, I ain't looking at it. Why? Because you might be traveling from region to region. You might have a SIM router that you're going to take with you on holiday to a trade show or just, you know, you and the family. Lamb. And when you do that, the last thing you want is to move into a new area where your SIM that was perhaps with EE or O2, when you've crossed the line into another country, what you don't want is when it's handed over to another mobile carry that they're in an uh, arrangement with, that suddenly you can't use all of your features or services or you're barred in certain uh, bands of coverage. So if it ain't unlocked, I ain't covering it. Next up, it's got to have Wi-Fi 6. Now, this may seem a bit extreme. Yes, you're going to find loads of them that cover Wi-Fi 5, and Wi-Fi 6 is technically an internal network wireless coverage. Why am I bothering them that you know, serious about an internal uh, 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 bandwidth connection of wireless connectivity, what I should really be focusing on is the outside there. Well, because as more and more devices arrive, be they even domestically affordable mobile phones released in 2023 and going into 2024, tablets, Amazon Fire TVs, the works, lots of them are arriving with Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 is now becoming the standard. And Wi-Fi 6, um, in your own local network environment, if you're connecting a Wi-Fi 6 device to another Wi-Fi 6 device, you have the potential to have 1.2 gigabits connectivity. 
that is a fraction faster than a wired connection. You can have a wired Ethernet connection between your router and a device, a physical wire that has the potential to be slower than a wireless connection with Wi-Fi 6. So although the routers I'm looking at today, you're not, even with a 5G SIM, likely not going to be able to fully saturate an, a Wi-Fi 6 one-to-one -one connection. I will say that these routers I'm looking at need to have Wi-Fi 6. So when you have a multitude of different client devices, I want to make sure they can have a decent whack at the bandwidth on the network. So if they're not Wi-Fi 6, they ain't getting included. Next up, I'm not looking at any mo uh, mobile L, you know, uh, SIM router, uh, LTE router, either portable or uh, mains powered that is locked to a provider. Now, what do I mean by that? If you are buying a SIM router these days, when you're thinking SIM router, you might think, oh, well, if I was going to buy a SIM card anyway from EE, Verizon, AT and T, O2, and some of them, like these ones here, include a router. You can scroll along and you can see they all include a router, but you're still getting that plan. Some of them are 24 months. Some of them are, you know, 30 days if you're lucky. Or some of them will be locked in at 12 months with a very limited data set allowed to you. Now, I'm not saying there isn't a place for these. And some of the routers I'm going to talk about later on, by the way, technically, and you'll see why, can actually be purchased in a contract. But if you can only get a SIM router via a contract, I'm not including it. Because there's too many limitations. It's almost always locked, although you can unlock them. But still, nonetheless, as far as I'm concerned, if there is no way that you can buy it commercially over the counter on its own, I ain't including it. Now, when it comes to network um, settings there, I would say, much like this router, and we're coming back to this device later on, I will not look at a router that doesn't have a particularly sturdy arrangement of network security and management you can see on the right hand side of the screen there so i need to have at least an option to do a sub um, ssid so you've got your main ssid but i want to be able to create a secondary ssid that's another wi-fi connection or a guest account i also want to have an um, application-led firewall so i want an in system firewall management again i want to be able to manage that firewall not have default some sim routers give you no configuration uh, configuration i want to be able to filter certain ips certain mac devices that's kind of a physical identity of your device there ip filtering i want to have wpa and WPA3 security. Some devices put WPA3 and bind it in with parental controls as well. It's a kind of one click, all purpose, several uh, configuration choices all rolled into one button. So, in some cases, WPA3 support uh, in terms of encryption. You don't find it on the specs, but it's actually there. It's just built into the software level. And fast um, URL filtering, blacklist in there, so you can say certain sites you can't access. It'll be nice if you have a full parental list or um, Google Safe Search support. I'm not going to be that pernickety. There are certain things like creating VLANs, um, you know, aggregating ports, stuff like that. I'm not going to say they're essential. It's nice if they're on there, but these are the ones here on the right that are essential to me. And finally, you have to have at least the option to configure the router via uh, a web-based GUI like the one you're seeing here that's fully configurable or at least via a mobile app with a lot of those configuration options. So those are the presets. I know it's running really, really long, but hear me out. Um, finally, I want to talk about another uh, miscommunication a lot of users can have. And again, those are some of those uh, sims you can see there because you can actually make quite a significant saving on a lot of uh, unlimited data sims these days. I want to highlight SIM routers like this one and why there's a very important distinction that people need to have. Now, this is a 50 quid 5G LTE router, and it's really easy to think, cool, it supports 5G SIMs. The 5G uh, wireless or SIM routers, they're really expensive. This one's only 50 quid. Well, that's because... This 5G is a misnomer. They are referring to 5G in not in terms of the SIM. They are talking about a frequency 5G, part of uh, Wi-Fi 6 and indeed Wi-Fi 5. And that's an in-house frequency that devices can communicate on. 5G, the cellular network, is a different thing. And when you look at this device, you would be, you know, mistaken to think that you are getting a 5G SIM router support. But you're not. You're getting a 4G SIM 
on this device. It supports a 4G SIM with 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. That's really important because it's very easy to accidentally buy a SIM router that looks like it's 5G SIM supported, but it's not. They've just been very either creative intentionally or by accident, I think I know which one I think it is, to say that it's a 5G LTE SIM router when it isn't. So just remember, when we're talking about 5G, never get 5G mixed up with 5G HZ gigahertz there. You want to talk about cellulars. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm sorry to make this intro so long, but it's really, really important you understand why the five routers I'm going to talk about are the best for their separate reasons. There's a couple of honourable mentions I want to talk about. Now, one of these is this device, the GL iNet Pooley AX. Now, this is a router that is still yet to launch. Um, I'm hopefully going to buy one of these myself for review. Um, and I'll get it here on the channel. I might do a giveaway for it at the end of the video. We'll see. But this device is everything. Okay. Anything. This is basically the perfect router for a 5G SIM. Not only has it got um, four SIM, it's got four antennae that are used for your cellular connection. You've got two antennae that are used for the in-house network. It's got support of 5G SIMs. It's got um, a Wi-Fi 6 built in. It's got an internal battery inside, so it doesn't even need to run on the mains, but you can, so you can use it in a setup environment, but take it with you. It has inbuilt VPN options into it. So again, with WireGuard or OpenVPN, it's got a physical button. And here is one of the early generations of that device, this one here and there's a physical button built into the side for you to enable or disable the VPN ad hoc when you need it. It's got 2.5 gigabit ethernet via a WAN and an additional LAN slot. It's got a USB port that can be used for storage as well as attaching another SIM USB dongle. You can run a LAN into it. You can have a four wave failover with an internal WAN via a cable. You've got the SIM router there. You've got the support of a USB dongle and it can be a repeater as well well i mention it in this video because although it's not in my top five the only reason it's not in my top five is i've not had a chance to use it had it been released by now i tell you right now this one would definitely be in my list and later this year i will review it but right now if you're looking for the best sim router find out if the Pooley AX has been released, it won't be cheap. As you can see, the early bird price there at 428 Nika is not cheap, even at the dropped price. But it is by far, at least on a hardware level, until we get our hands on it, I can't 100% commit. But I will say that is the best SIM router of 2023 and 2024, hopefully. And the other router, of course, I referred to it there, the RUTX50. This is a router we use here in one of our office spaces here at NAS compared between me and Eddie. Uh, we did a big review about it, and it's such a fantastic router. It's not cheap, unfortunately. It is a very expensive router, but it has multiple LANs. It has two SIM slots. It's got a 5G SIM. It's got, U it's got the works. Unfortunately, it's not Wi-Fi 6. And because it's not Wi-Fi 6, we can't include it in this list because of the very rules I created earlier in terms of future proofing. And that one thing is the only thing that takes it out of this list. If it had Wi-Fi 6, I would add it to this list. And there's even reports when you look online of some discussions stating it has support of Wi-Fi 6. But unfortunately, the brand's own official pages don't say as much. And unless it was on the official data sheets and the pages, I can't include it. But You've waited long enough. Let's talk about the five best SIM routers to buy in 2023 and 2024. So first up, I want to talk about the best SIM router for those that are looking to replace the router that they've got from their mobile broadband provider in their home. So you're looking at um, a router that can service a lot of devices at once. You're looking for a router that has potentially the option of mesh expandability over space and you're looking for a sim router there that can deal with the rigors of having lots of smart home devices alongside your tvs your mobiles ultimately the ability to juggle a lot which is generally where a lot more money is 
is spent. And in that solution, I would say this, the ZTE MC888. Now, this is a router I've personally experienced. A friend of mine got one earlier this year over here. You can see on Hot UK Deals when it was on offer and it first saw its first price drop down to 249 nickers. Again, it was a lot more expensive back then, I think by about 50 quid. And I've been around his home a couple of times and I really like it. I even went through some of the background stuff with his permission and looked at some of the control options and they are very, very good there. I would say uh, the thing that stands out mainly for it is just the sheer range of coverage there. As you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, we're talking about up to uh, supporting 64 devices via a single router environment. And bear in mind, although you would hope to see most routers in the home service, you know, at least three digits of um, devices in the local area network, you you tend to find with sim routers that the coverage is a lot smaller because they tend to be um, very few to do a few times you ever see external antennae which does kind of bring in the coverage but this is still a Wi-Fi 6 supported router there this is still a router that supports up to 64 devices on mains power and it has physical LAN ports now that's important because having a mobile router on the go can be very handy but if you are running, say, uh, you want to have lots of other devices communicating with the router. Finding SIM routers with multiple LAN ports, remember the one I showed you earlier from Teltonic, that one? There aren't a lot of routers out there with multiple SIMs that are um, LTE or SIM router based. This arrives with two individual ports there, one gig each, and one can work as a WAN, although both can be used as LAN if you need. It is an impressively hardware spec router, and moreover, this is one of the ones, the one we were scrolling through earlier on, those different uh, hotspots and routers, this is a router that has been rebranded by some of these, but once again, it doesn't break our rule because although you can get it individually, you can still get it with a cellular plan. Again, as far as home SIM routers go, whether it is that you haven't got good broadband running into your street or your more remote home, but you do have good cellular coverage, this, this room here, the ZTE888, is a good little router to choose. But just bear in mind that its availability globally isn't fantastic. And although 250 nickers seems like a lot, you've got to factor in that this is more than just a mobile hotspot with add-ons. Next up, I want to talk about this one from D-Link. Those of you that have followed the channel before will know from personal experience how high I rate this one. We did a full review on it um, around about two years ago. We did some performance benchmarks with it where we were looking a bit in different 4 and 5G areas and covered it across different cellular net networks, not just in terms of 4G and 5G, but we also did some Wi-Fi 6 connections and different data carriers there. And it really did leave me quite impressed. Now, this is also available under a couple of other brands. This hardware does have a couple of other brand labels on top of it, but from what I can see in terms of availability across not only the UK, but of course, larger parts of Europe and the US, this device is more readily accessible there. And although it's a hundred quid more than the one we just talked about, as far as um, portable routers go, this is one of the best I've ever used. Now, as you can see from the specs on the right side of the screen, yes, it is Wi-Fi 6, but also, it is a portable router that has a physical LAN connection. That is not common. When you're looking at a lot of SIM routers, most of them have got wireless connection only. And that's one of the other reasons why using your phone as a mobile hotspot can often be slightly detrimental to larger networks. Because having that wireless connection, you have to get quite close before you can really make the most of Wi-Fi 6. Whereas the LAN connection as well really will benefit you. Also, it's an AX1800, which again, when you get to more smaller portable routers, isn't unusual because of the fewer antennae that they can squeeze inside versus the power. But it's got a very good battery in there with a 14 hour battery life and supporting up to 32 devices. So though not as high as the router that we just spoke about for the office, as a wireless router that also runs off the USB power, it's pretty good to support up to 32 devices. Remember, with a physical connection there. And not only can you manage the device via the LCD on the front there, which is something you can see here, but you can also manage the device remotely utilizing a mobile app and a desktop application as well. So there's lots of features and services that are built into this router, which make it, for me, one of the best portable routers out there. Now, when I was researching this, 
I did come across this other ZTE review um, out there, not only obviously from the Amazon reviews out there, and again, this is a router that's about 70 nicker cheaper as a mobile router. It doesn't have the physical LAN connection, but it has pretty much everything else. And I've never used it, but I've read good reviews about it online. So I thought it remiss not to at least highlight this one, because although I still maintain this is the best portable um, 5G SIM router out there that's got Wi-Fi 6 and a physical LAN connection and controls and security, I have to at least uh, agree that online there are very positive reviews for this ZTE portable router as well. Next up, the most feature-rich um, 5G router I could find. Unsurprisingly, this refers back to a router we talked about earlier on. It is this, the GLX3000, the Spitz AX router there. Do you remember right there at the introduction, I talked about a router here that I couldn't possibly include because although it seemed to tick all of the boxes, it wasn't released yet? Well, technically, you can get hold of that router bar one feature this is that exact same router it's got those six antennae for the internal and the external it's got dual sim it's got four different failovers it's got as you can see here on the right support for open guard ad guard and wire guard for your vpn and your anti ad needs it's got a 2.5 gig network connection it has got another lan port just for the sheer heck of it it's got that physical vpn button there it's got even a tf salt slot and a usb slot the usb for connecting usb storage or you can go ahead and attach another dongle there for that four stage failover if you want but on top of that a tf slot allows you to expand the existing eight gigabytes of internal storage with even more storage there again by far one of the most impressive feature rich routers i've seen the only reason that I would put this router that's still in development um, ahead of it is this one has a battery. It's the one difference. And if you were never planning on taking the router for a walk anyway, then you don't need the battery. And this is an option that's available now, but just bear in mind, it sells stupidly quick. And it's really annoying that it does. And I personally would still wait for the battery model because then at least you've got an uninterruptible power connection there in the event of power failure in your office then what you'd like is a router that can still continue so you can use your phones to find out what is going on during that power cut but still with support of up to as you see there 64 devices on this particular router on top of that might be mains powered but at the same time just generally running on such low power that you can get so much done within that and that multiple coverage of network connections both with the cellular and the internal networks on the wi-fi 6 and the range of devices it is by far the most fully featured one i have talked about with the added bonus that thanks to its support of the very latest version of openwrt the configuration and control of this router alongside the security protocols are on point for those unaware openwrt is the open source router and network manager software and you have that in here so the calibration and configuration of this router is much like the hardware stupidly fully featured now we move on to arguably the most expensive sim router i have ever seen now you're seeing it here on screen this is the nighthawk m6 Pro. Now, there are different versions of this device floating around that I'll get onto in a moment, but it's important that we're talking about this one here on screen. This thing goes for a thousand dollars, which is insanity. Why would anyone spend a thousand routers on a SIM router when a lot of users go into SIM routers because they're trying to save a few quid, not just because they don't want to be tied down to a contract? Now, full disclosure, the first SIM router I ever used was a Netgear. It was one of the really early Netgears. I think this was uh, the M1, I think, when it was originally called on. I did a review on this. And when I first used it, as much as I liked it, it was a physical LAN router there. It had USB connectivity, the ability to add routers on there. It had a battery pack inside that was a little flaky, but then I sent it back for a pair, and then the new one I got back was absolutely fine. With real-time information there and battery powered. Now, fast forward, that was back in... 2015-16, fast forward to now, this device, although it commands an insanity price tag, it's also stupidly feature rich and it's also smaller than the one I'm holding here. Now, as you can see there on screen, I'm sure you can see it on the right hand side, this is a Wi-Fi 6E mobile router. There are not 
a lot of those around in the market. What is Wi-Fi 6E? Well, it's more than just them slapping a letter on the end of Wi-Fi 6. When you're dealing with internet connections, remember earlier on when I was talking about the frequency of uh, 5 gigahertz, which is a wireless frequency that you has got individual channels inside for transmission of data between devices? Well, there's another frequency above that called 6 gigahertz. 6 gigahertz is accessible on Wi-Fi 6E and opens up a whole new frequency channel to play with. It doesn't give greater speed, but what it does is allow more of those 1.2 gigabit Wi-Fi 6 connections. It opens up the frequency for more devices to have larger bandwidths to play with. And again, that's an in-network benefit, but still a benefit nonetheless. It also has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ethernet local connection that's right rather than one gig this device arrives with a 2.5 gig ethernet connection there there's also a usb port there that can be used for both storage and be utilized for power there with a 13 hour battery life it's an ax 3600 routed remember that one at the beginning for the home that was like 250 quid uh, but it needed a mains power connection this is an incredibly compact and portable alternative to that but unfortunately it commands a terrifyingly high price tag why would you pay extra for that probably not for the 2.5 gig and the wi-fi 6c specifically on its own but because it is one of the most user-friendly routers out there most of the wireless routers i've talked about today have a certain technical upheaval it requires a little bit more education about network services to make the most of them and get them as purely secure as possible but also to have the quickest easiest way to do it and with the nighthawk routers it has to be said that they are one of the by far most user-friendly routers on the market netgear have spent a lot of time refining it it's not it's still you know networking so it requires a little bit of nous but nowhere near as much as any other router on this list and although i am not going to say i like the price tag it is ridiculous at a grand it has to be said that if you're looking for the most frictionless accessible um, entry point into 5g sim routers that is both portable and with high bandwidth possibility in the home and outside the home the M6 Pro is probably one of the best fully featured routers out there. It just commands such a high price tag, but you're paying for ease down the road. That ease down the road, it's also worth touching on. You can, if you choose, go ahead and upgrade your existing devices to 2.5G very affordably. If you go for something like this, this is from QG, this is just $12. And that $12 price tag there allows you to add 2.5 gigabit ethernet to your local area environment just connect it to your pc or mac and boom you've got 2.5 gig that means that one dedicated device could connect to that nighthawk via the 2.5 gig ethernet port there on the rear and then that everyone else still gets to enjoy the wireless connectivity and as you can see there it supports up to eight gigabit of general bandwidth to play with for all the connected devices it's still a grand which is way too much for this device but still nonetheless if you are looking for the most feature rich high bandwidth capacitive sim router in 2023 and 2024 it still has to be said that this is as good as it gets And finally, do you remember at the beginning, one of my top five list hour, I mentioned the best SIM router for the home? Well, much like that, this is the best SIM router for business. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, obviously, if you're a business, I'd still recommend making sure that your network is managed by a switch, an internal network switch. When it comes to the entry point for a 5G SIM router, be it as in, you know, the primary internet connection, I hate seagulls, or as a secondary failover point, the Zixel NR5101 is one of the best out there. Indeed, it is the one utilized by EE. It's utilized by, I believe, the 3 network as well. If we go in, you can see the 3 network using exactly that same router. It is one that's been adopted globally by a lot of ISP. So again, this is one that you can buy independently or you can get this one via a um, cellular data plan based on 1, 12, 18 or 24 months. I wouldn't recommend going for a data plan for lots of the reasons listed. Again, look at the price of some of those unlimited data sims there why lock yourself in but still nonetheless 
the router itself is pretty darn good notwithstanding uh, the price tag at 349 so it is 100 quid more than the home router we mentioned at the beginning but i will say with that comes some pretty impressive hardware taking a look at it there as you can see not only do we have pretty much the full range of 5g and indeed 4g coverage globally but when we go to the hardware interfaces there and seeing what exactly the device arrives with in terms of hardware you've got two ethernet ports there so again wan lan or lan lan if you choose on top of that you've got a micro sim slot there for at least just one of those but you've also got a usb port that can be utilized for usb storage as well one of the other impressive things about this router that's worth touching on is although it has internal antennae you can attach custom antennas very very easily why is that desirable because if you're a business and you've got a larger building here you've got multiple floors you can go ahead and buy quite affordable wired antennae that will directly plug into this you're not locked in to the antennas that the system arrives with or if they're bolted on the inside or even if they're external ones that you can't adapt this is a sim router for business that you can attach quite high gain antennae for the outside of your building to get the very best um, uh, cellular 5G coverage funneling into this router which from there not only does it have six internal um, antennae there ignore the omnidirectional I think that's a typo on my part um, but on top of that you've got with the WAN ports there support of up to AX4200 or 4.2 potential gigabits of coverage when in ut and utilization again there are options to get it with a sim or without a sim depending on where you are in the world and as far as most of the routes i've talked about today if you're a business user that wants to have the configuration and control of a router but want a more traditional easy going in data experience and you've got a side network switch to handle everything this is a very good choice and it's very clear why um, a, a lot of the cellular plans out there have adopted this with their own branding but you don't have to go for their branding go i know 349 nicker seems like a lot go for this and go for one of those cheaper unlimited sims that we just talked about because you stand to make a much bigger saving overall but this has been the five best 5g sim routers to buy in 2023 and 2024 if there are recommendations that you want to make sim routers that you've seen good reviews for maybe one that you're utilizing maybe you've used one of the ones i've talked about today and you're not that happy with it or one of my earlier points and some of my caveats about my deal breakers weren't tight enough for you maybe something i've missed let me know in the comments if that is true if you're looking for more guidance on this, I'm going to make an article on all five of these devices and a few other honourable mentions, which although might not be live right now, will be live in the next couple of days and linked at the top. And also, I strongly recommend checking out my 10 LT, uh, my SIM LTE router guide here with the 10 things you need to know, because it is genuinely a very well put together video, if I do say so myself, and covers all of the fundamentals to an exceptional degree. It's arrogant, but it really will cover everything you need. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.